In this practical example, you will parameterize piston components in order to simulate their motion. Use geometric constraints and dimensions to do this. The drawing. Let's start by inserting geometric constraints to elements in components. First, apply the coincident constraint to all elements except for the circumference. By sketching the piston cylinder, insert the vertical constraint up to this line, horizontal to this element, and parallel between these two entities. Let's define 300 units for the cylinder width and 400 for the height dimensions. Now apply auto constraint to the block walls. Let's now insert the equal constraint. You apply a fixed constraint to one of the walls. At the same time, the object option is enabled. Apply 1000 units for the length and 50 for the width measurements. Let's conclude this part by applying collinear constraints to the cylinder block and walls. You can apply the same relationship to all entities, which are part of the block walls, so they remain at the same height. See how the drawing looks now. There are equality constraints applied to these two rods, symmetry between the two sides, and tangency to one of the rod halves. The length of one rod will be 300 units, and the other will be 700. Let's insert these measurements using the Aligned tool. The radii of both rods will be 20 units at both ends. Apply the coincident relationship between the rod ends. You can see how they are positioned. Now enable the line tool and sketch a reference line from the midpoint of the cylinder body, 1000 units long. Place the circumference at the end of this line. Now you can erase a line which is no longer needed in the drawing. Let's apply a fixed constraint to this circumference. Finally, apply the coincident constraint from the straight line and then to the center of the circumference.
on the other end constrain the midpoint of the cylinder. Now the drawing is completely defined. You can hide all constraints in order to view the drawing better. Let's simulate the movement of the piston components. Select the shorter rod and then move it to simulate the piston movement. You can even test the layout by changing the rod length to see how the piston behaves. Now our drawing is finished and you can simulate the movement of the piston components. In this practical example you have learned how to simulate the operating of a mechanism using geometric constraints and dimensions.